Hi everyone, my name is Karol Boguniewicz. I'm an e-expert and engineer from VxRail technical marketing team at Dell Technologies. The topic for this session is vSphere and VxRail REST API get started in an easy way. And if you open that, then I assume that you're interested in RESTful APIs. And that's why I wanted to make it more practical for you. Instead of preparing slides, I thought that such a short time allocated, I will show you an extensive demo instead. I'd like to show you three main things. First, how you can start your API journey by leveraging an interactive web-based API documentation. Second, how you can use these APIs from different frameworks, such as scripting with PowerShell in Windows environments and configuration management tools such as Ansible and Linux. And finally, how you can consume these APIs virtually from any application in any programming language. Sounds interesting? Well, let's dive deeper into that. So let me start the demo. So probably the easiest way to start your API journey is to use the interactive web-based documentation for that. Um, we're leveraging here a Swagger framework, uh, which is an open framework for API development, very popular in the industry. Um, and we've designed those APIs in the way that they are complementing these few APIs. And you can just go to this URL from the VxRail manager and uh, you can choose, there are 12 different groups of APIs available in the 7.0 version. I'm not going to talk about all of them, just a few of them. So if you choose this spec for LCM, that will provide you with the functionality for the automated lifecycle uh, management, which is a huge differentiator here, big value add. If you go to support, you can change the support features such as support account or maybe remotely collect the uh, log bundles for the system. And if you go to the system, uh, then you can collect uh, very useful system information, including health, etc. To start interacting with that, you just click one of those API calls and immediately it expands and provides you with the you know, possible response codes like 200, 400, et cetera, and also the example values that these APIs would return. And you can also check the model. This will show you the data model that is used by the API, uh, so you will know what kind of information that you can expect in return. To try it, just click Try It Out button and Execute. This one doesn't have any parameters. And you immediately see here that we got Code 401, that's an error message that provided the center credentials are not valid. And that's actually a good thing because we haven't authenticated against the system yet. So that's a good thing that it, pro it prevents you from authorized access to the API. To fix that, I'm going just to authorize using my vCenter credentials. So administrator and password. And you can check the authorization status with the lock icon, which is now closed. You try that again. Um, we can see there's a corresponding curl command URL. And right now the response code is 200, which is success. You can see uh, the response in a JSON format, very useful information about the system, system VMs, health of that, how many hosts in the cluster, et cetera, et cetera. And a typical scenario, if you'd like to manage uh, the uh, infrastructure remotely, we need to collect some inventory information. And you can do that with the hosts API available from the host category. You can check the value model. Uh, we can try this API. Again, we can see the returned uh, in the response. And this provides a lot of useful information on all the hardware components and systems. In a similar way, you can consume vSphere APIs also the same and the same approach, web-based interactive documentation, just log into the center, go to the developer center, and then you can choose the API. In this case, we'll interact with the center, so choosing the center API. And for instance, to get a list of VMs on the system, I will choose the first one, get res vCenter VM. I can provide multiple filters to filter the output based on names, folders, data centers, etc maybe even a power state of VM. Well, for the simplicity, I will just use the default. Let's execute. And 
Immediately, you will see also the corresponding curl command and also the response. This time, it also includes the information about the data model use. And um, let's take a look at this CentOS 7 VM template machine. Uh, because in a typical scenario, you're going to have a golden image from which you will create multiple VMs. You will have a pre-installed operating system with all security settings and software. I've copied the ID of this VM because I'm going to now clone this um, VM from this template. There is an API call with the action clone. I can populate the parameters using the data type, which is shown on the right. Now, as a source, I will provide this VM ID that I've just copied. Uh, let's immediately turn it on. And I'm not going to modify too much in this uh, clone. So maybe let's, instead of using default names, provide a specific name for this demo. I will not change the placement. It will be the same location as the template itself. Very simple, clear um, example here. I'm going to execute. I can see the curl command. I can see the response. In this case, it's an ID of the newly created VM from this template. I can check that from the VMs and templates view. I can see that this clone indeed was created. It has been powered on and available. So that was a very quick start with the interactive web-based documentation. What if you'd like to start your API journey using the available automation frameworks for scripting, etc.? Well, the API cookbook will be handy for you. You can uh, go to that. It's available on the support site. And let's see some very simple example. Let's check the system status. We did that already from Swagger. We're going to do the same and you can see that we have multiple examples here in curl and PowerShell and Ansible. So let's start with PowerShell. PowerShell is now available on most of the modern Windows systems, a very popular uh, scripting framework. I've already, but you can also use, of course, the REST-based um, calls, but it's better to install the necessary modules because it just makes things simpler. In this case, I've already installed the Xray API, and you can see that it installed multiple namespaces corresponding to those different API groups that I shown you from the web interface. So let's copy this example. Let's copy the DNS name, in this case, of the VxRail manager. Let's provide the authentication information again. And we receive the same output that we see from the web-based interface. To make it more human readable, I can provide the convert to JSON commandlet, and now it's formatted for me. I can check the list of all of the commandlets which are available in this module with the get command and get some help about specific commandlet using get help command. This is really the same experience that you get from PowerCLI if you have ever used that. So let's take a look. Um, that you can do similar things with the Power CLI, but we will talk to the software stack that is built into the system. So I imported the Power CLI. Immediately, I got some getting start information. I've listed all of the commandlets, and uh, there are currently hundreds of them, almost 900 automation commands. When you combine that with what we provide with VxRail, you in total get more than 950. Very powerful. Now let's check the Ansible example. So I've installed the CentOS system here. I can check the Ansible version installed. I already copied this example and changed the envi environmental variables. And I can run this playbook. So using this different framework, this now configuration management framework, I get the same result. I can check the system information. Now let's take it further. What if you'd like to consume those vSphere and Victor APIs virtually from any application, any programming language? Another tool, Postman, will be handy here. VMware provides several examples on how we can consume vSphere automation APIs using Postman through the collections. They are available on codevmware.com. I've already imported them on the system. You can see them here, vSphere automation REST samples. Uh, you can browse through them and 
For instance, uh, you can check VM create with details, which is an example how to create a new VM with a lot of detailed parameters from REST APIs. In the body tab, you can see the past parameters uh, that you need to provide. So I wanted to show you a quick trick how you can use the same approach, but with the XFL API, when you go back to Swagger, when you use this hyperlink there, you, when you save this file, it actually saves the API specification, which you can import as a collection to Swagger. So we can use that in the same way. So I'm going to import that with default settings. Um, so yeah. I'm importing that, and immediately I have a folder with a new collection, the Xray REST API configuration documentation, and that contains all of the same API calls that were shown in the web-based interface. There is one more variable that we need to set up in the environment here. It's base URL. You can copy that variable from the Swagger. And again, we need to authorize the against the system first to provide the vCenter server authentication details and providing those here. And now when you send this um, call to the VxRail manager, we get the same output nicely formatted in JSON format. Now, if you'd like to do that from other programming languages, this is where the code functionality is helpful because it can generate code snippets for you in different programming languages, including C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, Node.js, PHP, um, Python, and many, many more. So let's try the Python as an example. I'm going to copy this automatically generated code, paste that into the text editor. I'm going to add one additional parameter, and this is uh, really just to disable the check of these certificates. And immediately, I can get the same output from the Python that you can you could see in the previous examples. This is really powerful. So let's recap. In this session, I walk you through how you can easily start your API journey and how you can use vSphere and VxRay APIs together from the same tools to get more value. We discuss how you can explore and interact with these APIs from the web browser, PowerShell, and other automation frameworks. And finally, I've shown you how you can integrate with these APIs from virtually any application in any programming language using code snippet generation generator in Postman. I hope you found it interesting. Please give it a like if you like that and feel free to reach out to me with questions. Thank you for your attention and have a great virtual VM world.